So the only last, I'll just make a few more comments. We are at the moment looking at um, uh, forcing the government, if I can put it that way, to merge um, refugee status determination and torture claim screening. Now, I think my fellow panelists have already advocated for how this is so important. And this has basically been a major emphasis of um, our firm since uh, 2006. Um, it's, it's interesting, but I mean, I talked about the fact that there's a lot of asylum seekers who are abusing the system at the moment. And one of the ways that people abuse it is by using this dual system. The case of C actually talks about this, where uh, Justice Hartman commented that it's so easy for people to abuse the system. They come here, they make a claim to the UNHCR, they know they have to wait a couple years for their claim to be rejected, so they wait. Um, when their claim is rejected, they go, oh, okay, it's time to go to immigration and make a torture claim now. So they go to the immigration and make a torture claim, they know that's going to take a few years. So altogether, they know they're here in Hong Kong without any problems for at least maybe seven years or so. Now, maybe, and I guess I'll leave countries out of it, but let's say one person comes and he finds out about this loophole about the system, he goes back and tells everybody in his village who wants jobs and who wants to get money for the village about this, they all come. I mean, it's basic common sense. The government's trying to blame asylum seekers for abusing the system, but really, at the end of the day, the government allowed there to be such a dual system. The government is responsible to deal with the mess it started. The government could have merged RSD systems and torture claim screening systems years ago. They could have made it a good process where they would screen claims within a year. If people know that they're going to be kicked out in a year, they won't be interested in coming and risking imprisonment and all of that, or spending so much money to come to Hong Kong. So I would say, basically, there's no, it is a no-brainer. It is for the good of Hong Kong people, it is for the good of the government, for the good of absolutely everybody, to merge these systems. And um, I would say that that would also work to the advantage of the asylum seeking community. Because then, our genuine asylum seekers will actually have their voices heard and not be treated um, in the same category as economic migrants or as the fuss or the unwanted um, population of Hong Kong. And also, if this happens, our voice as an NGO community or as legal advocates or what, university students, you know, anyone concerned, will actually be a lot stronger because you're advocating not for economic migrants anymore, advocating for people who really need this system to improve.